Welcome to the Duke Lemur Center. We're so glad you're here. Did you know that the Duke Lemur Center is home to the world's largest and most diverse collection of lemurs in the world outside of Madagascar? There were over 240 really cool animals right here. And before you meet some of them yourself, we'd like to share a very special story. Lemurs are primates, just like monkeys and apes and humans. But lemurs are in a special group of primates called prosimians. Simian means monkey. So prosimian means professional monkey. Lemurs are professional monkeys. Actually, no. Pro in this case means pre, like before monkeys. Oh. Right. Lemurs resemble the ancestors of apes and monkeys in so many ways. In fact, lemurs and humans share a common ancestor, the ancestor of all primates that lived around 70 million years ago. Lemurs only live on the island of Madagascar. Madagascar is a huge island about the size of California off the east coast of the African continent. That's right, Conrad. Tunga Suet, Madagascar. Welcome to Madagascar. Did you know that almost 23 million people live on the island of Madagascar? Our country has an amazing diversity of cultures, incredible landscapes, and astounding biodiversity. Across the island, we are working with organizations like the Duke Lemur Center to protect our environment for future generations. I hope that you all have a chance to visit someday. Feluma! Duke Lemur Center director Dr. Ann Yoder confirmed that 60 million years ago, lemurs reached the island of Madagascar by floating a raft of vegetation. The diversity of lemurs you see in Madagascar today very likely stems from a small group that sailed together and colonized the island. Today, there are at least 80 lemur species on Madagascar. The smallest lemurs are about two inches tall, and the largest lemurs are over three feet tall and weigh 20 pounds. Can we see some more lemurs now? It's a great idea. Jada, why don't you go meet the lemur keepers to find out more about what lemurs eat? Conrad, you can go find out what sort of research they do here. I'm going to go find out a little bit more about the educational outreach that's done here, and I want to learn a little bit more about why conservation of lemurs and their habitat is so important. That sounds like a plan. Great! One, two, three, lemur time! Let's go meet Britt Keith. She's the top lemur keeper. Come on! Hi, Britt. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jada. It's good to have you here. We're going to weigh out their chow. No, thank you. <laughs> what are in these lemur biscuits? There's fat, there's proteins, there's vitamins and minerals. Kind of like the type of food you would feed your dog or your cat, but made for primates. So you're going to weigh out about 60 grams of the biscuits. We just put it in there until that hits 60. We're going to weigh out some fruit and vegetables. What's your favorite fruit? Grapes. Yeah, the lemurs like them too. And we'll put it in the bowl and you can weigh that. We're 200 with the fruit and vegetables should be stopped. Let's go feed the lemurs. Yeah. This is our crown lemur family. And they know we're coming, so I'll go in first. What do lemurs eat in the wild? Specific lemurs will eat specific things. Like these guys at crown lemurs will eat a lot of fruit. Some lemurs eat insects only. And then we have some lemurs that only eat leaves. So we're gonna go take that bucket of leaves and we're gonna go feed some that only eat leaves. So here comes mom. So just give her that. There you go. Okay. That's Drusilla. She's the mom. She gets whatever she wants because she's the female and she's the most dominant member of the group. What do they eat in the wild? Cockerel shafak are leaf eaters, so most of the time they're eating leaves, but they also eat seeds, and sometimes they'll go down in the ground and eat dirt. But they eat several hundred different species of plants in Madagascar. Here in captivity, we feed them all kinds of lemur chow, fruits and vegetables, and then we give them leaves every day as well. I'm going back to talk to Dr. MK about the science and research being done here. She's really smart. Hi, Conrad. Why don't you have a seat? Why is the Duke Lemur Center such a great place for science? Scientists come here to study all sorts of things about the lemurs. Their behavior, communication, infant development, basically anything about how they move, think, and interact with each other and their environment. We also learn a lot more about ourselves and our own evolutionary history by studying the lemurs. 
Can we see any research projects going on today? Absolutely. Now you'll be with Lydia Green to learn more about olfactory communication. Hey, Conrad. How's it going? We're going to look at olfactory communication in lemurs. And this is how lemurs can communicate using their sense of smell. So we're going to use ring-tailed lemurs, which have the best olfactory system of all the different lemurs we have out here. They've got three different scent glands. The males have a gland on their wrist and one on their shoulder. They've also got glands under their tails. And so I've got here the secretions from a female ring-tailed lemur collected from under her tail. But before I present it to Licinius here, I thought I'd let you sniff it. <sighs> It's not good. Lysinius is going to like it, though. And we're going to put the secretion from this female named Sobe on one pole. And we're going to put a secretion from a male named Tugger on the other pole. And then we're going to let Lysinius sniff them. And we'll see if he can tell the difference. So we're going to rub it right here. And we're going to take the female odor from Sobe. And we're going to put it right here. It looks like he's feeling pretty competitive with the male. He's tail marking a lot and he's wrist marking a lot, but he also looks like he's really interested in the female's odor. What kind of things do they communicate through their scent? Lemurs communicate so much information through their scents. Things that you and I might talk about, lemurs smell about. Research out here at the Lemur Center is really fun and really cool. Anytime you want to come out here and help me do a trial, just let me know. I'd love to have more assistance. Okay. Smell you later. Mm. I'm here with Charlie Welsh. Charlie is the conservation coordinator here at the Duke Lemur Center. Charlie, why is conservation of lemurs so important? Well, lemurs are some of the most endangered or threatened mammals on the planet. We want to do what we can to protect them in Madagascar. We have a, a project, a conservation project in northeastern Madagascar called Sava Conservation. We're working a lot with the communities, with activities like reforestation, fish farming, environmental education. Research is very important. We want to understand the forest. We want to understand the lemurs. And all of that is very important in really achieving sustainable conservation. What can visitors to the Duke Lemur Center do to help promote conservation in Madagascar? Our conservation work is completely supported by donations and by grants. Charlie, thanks so much for explaining the important conservation work that's being done right here at the Lemur Center in Durham and all the way in Madagascar. It's always my pleasure, Stephen. Yo! Yo! We got you! You sure did. How was your day? We had so much fun. Awesome. We hope you learned a little bit about what makes the Duke Lemur Center so special. Visit lemur.duke.edu to find out more about how you can get involved with the Duke Lemur Center's work. Help, Help us protect, protect the, the lemurs! lemurs. Woo!